when you first get your CV Life 5 to 25 optic. It's going to come in a white box like this. Let's go ahead and open it up. Inside, you're going to get your user manual with information and some of the specifications about reticles, designs, and some of the information you might find relevant to zeroing. You'll have a scope cleaning cloth, a lens cloth, a really decent sunshade, and inside of that is where you're going to find some of your other accessories. So this actually comes with two batteries, which is a great deal. You get two batteries with this. You do get a throw lever, which I'll take out of the box or the bag in a second and attach. And then you have one of your tools for the turrets. Again, I'll take that out in a moment to show you the zeroing process. Here's the sunshade. You can thread this in just like that. And it adds just enough to the body, to the objective, to cut down on glare. I'll go ahead and thread in the throw lever assist, the mag ring assist here. Just like that. You can see that the scope does come with some nice flip covers for both objectives. And here's that mag ring assist. Very functional. Nice grippy texture. Definitely has a little something there that will help you when you grab onto it. If your hands are slippery, if it's wet out, it's raining right now as I film, and something like this would be a great idea when the temperature or the weather starts to be an issue. When you're ready to zero your turrets, the first thing you're going to do is loosen up these small Allen screws around the optic. And when they're all loose, you don't have to remove them, just loosen them. You can actually lift off your turret cap. And underneath, you're going to see that you have a black disc here. And this black disc also has some Allens that you're just going to loosen up enough. You don't need to remove them, just loose enough that it is movable. This is actually your turret. And this is the zero stop mechanism. So you're going to loosen that up and make sure you turn it all the way to the right so it stops. And remember when you are operating your turret, technically you're moving it this way, counterclockwise. And so you're going to make sure that the zero stop is actually engaged all the way to the right, just like that. Then you can go ahead and tighten up those Allens again. After each one of these Allens is snug, just tight enough, doesn't have to be very tight just snug to engage. Then you're going to grab your turret cap cover 
for the erector tube system there. And you're going to do the same thing with this. Just tightening with the zero on the witness mark. Remember, there's a witness mark underneath. I'm going to drop that down to find it right about... Right about there. Yep. Again, just snug on the Allens until it engages. I tend to use the long end of the Allen so I don't over tighten these because it doesn't take much torque pressure to strip out aluminum. So I try to use the long end. And after installing, the first thing that I'll do is test out that zero stop to make sure it is actually stopping where it should. And it sounds right, looks right, feels right. And now I'll go ahead and test out by doing a five round group, making sure that I did truly zero that and that there's no issues. The windage is slightly different than the elevation. It has lift to operate turrets. So you lift in order to dial them back and forth. And when you're ready to zero these, there's no zero stop internally. So it's just gonna be slipping the scales as it's called, removing or, or loosening rather these Allens and then getting it on the zero line on the witness and then closing like that. This is what it's going to look like in low light conditions. Max brightness right there on level 6. It has off in between. There's 5. And so on. Well, who is going to get the most out of an optic like this? Because of the feature sets that are on the CB Life product, I think competition shooters and target shooters are going to be the first category I would recommend. And then after that, I still think I can recommend hunting, especially varmint hunting in particular. It's because of the feature sets that an optic like this has. So again, it's a 5 to 25 by 56 first focal plane, which means in target shooting, as well as competition shooting like NRL 22, field target with PCP air rifles, and then NRL or PRS competitions. For those base class builds, an optic like this that has those features of a mill configuration reticle with a mill configuration turret that are exposed with a zero stop, that means you can be comfortable to dial out to different distances and have some reliability there in the turrets, or you can use your holdovers if you think it's uh, more efficient or faster. You have a 10 yard setting, which means again, the parallax or field target competitions, it's gonna allow you to shoot really, really close targets and really far. Or if you need to hang a plumb bob in your living room and use a laser bore sighter, that 10 yard parallax is quite a useful feature. But remember the parallax does in fact go all the way out to infinity. So you could put it on a center fire, something that you're gonna shoot quite a bit further. 
hunting is still an application, I would say especially varmint hunting, and you do have some illumination with offsettings in between, which is the modern design for precision rifle scopes, and it's a good one. They're very tactile, and I think the uh, fitment of the dial itself gives a lot of feeling of quality and pretty good function on each one of these dials. So I don't think uh, hunting, I don't think you're gonna have issues in colder climates where metal tends to contract or change sizes. I think everything is still gonna work fluidly. It's gonna function well, and you have enough magnification that you can take longer shots on varmints or targets or PRS uh, type competitions on small targets and spot your impacts or misses. But you also have enough low end power to really back off in those hunting situations and get a nice wide field of view. The reticle is appropriate for all sorts of types of hunting. Having a smaller center dot is only an issue if you have a lot of vision trouble. And even so, there is illumination with that six settings and you can use the small side slots above, which is kind of a quadrant to aim if you're on lower power. And I don't think it's gonna be an issue for most people. As I previously mentioned, having this many features and at this price point, it's a very good base class build for NRL 22, which is what you're looking at right here. It's my 22 rifle. And this would be like a base class build, which could get you into uh, just a different level of competition, maybe that entry level competition. And as you're learning with your skill set, getting better and improving with taking those shots and the fundamentals, something like this is really not going to hold you back. And price point, it's very, very accessible. Now, if this is not exactly what you're needing, and it maybe even has more features than you're used to or want to use, you should still check out CV Life on Amazon. They have a lot of products that are like this, similar, maybe have a few features, but not all of them. And they're a slightly cheaper price point. So even if this isn't exactly what you're looking for, maybe check out some of these videos in the description. Maybe check out on Amazon CV Life's storefront and see what else they have to offer.